Hi folks, Rob back with another Rob Plays. Now, before we actually get to playing the game for this week, I'm going to do a little unboxing. This is Mono, which is developed by Raphael Graf and Clay Spell Airy. I hope I've not mangled that. If I have, my greatest apologies. Um, Mono just came out a matter of a week ago, and they got in touch with me and asked if I was interested in checking it out. And well, here it is. They've actually um, sent me the cartridge, so I need to. I should disclaim that um, they did send me this. I didn't actually pay for it. Um, it's a PAL-only release, only on cartridge. You can get it from their website. That's going to be in the description. Um, it's 34.90 euros. Um, past postage and so here it is now before I actually play the game do a run for it I'm actually just gonna go and walk through what you actually get in the package so to start with we've got the cartridge case it's a universal case the kind of cases you see on RG CDs cartridge releases um, yeah the sort of clamshell uh, style used on a lot of console games as well pretty much pretty much basic uh, art, you've got the, the logo art, the, the title character, Space Cadet Mono, whose goal is to save the universe by blasting her way through six stages of chaos. Uh, the back shows you some screenshots and some more art. It's kind of a minimalistic tone, which I think kind of works well for the game. Now let's crack this open, and inside, you've got the cartridge itself. Uh, let's get that into the position. And the cartridge itself, Initially, I thought it was, like, I thought it actually was, um, its own kind of shell. Um, the reason I thought that was simply because just the feel of it doesn't, it didn't feel rough like other 3D printed cartridges. It was actually, that's a nice angle. Um, but then I look at the way that the mono logo is engraved in on it, and I think, actually, it is a 3D print. But it's a very good 3D print. It's very solid. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have that roughness you expect from other 3D printed um, kinds of elements. So, standard cartridge fits in the cartridge port. It is a different shape, which I like. Again, um, harkening back to my videos last year where I looked at a whole bunch of those, Mono has another slightly different cartridge design. Now, the next piece in the package is this little... this little enamel pin. I ah, really hate <laughs> it's flying around the um, the case of the baggy chair bit. Anyway, little enamel, enamel pin with the mono logo. It's actually nice, nice design. Again, the logo is very understated and I think it's, it's an, a lovely, lovely piece in there. Um, yeah, I really need to make sure I have a jacket that I can fit that onto, but it's a cool little, cool little tidbit indeed. And the last piece is uh, the instruction manual. Um, pull this up, bring it up. It's a little fold out leaflet um, and it just has sort of the basics of how you play the games. Mono being a vertically scrolling uh, shmup is not the most complex of games out there so realistically there isn't that, oops, there really isn't that much to it. Uh, seven, eight. So it's really just those eight panels. Um, and I like that that's a, that's a nice little way of actually showing it compared to uh, a lot of other games. But, so that's what you get in the package for your 34 euros. Um, that roughly, like by the calculations I did, that roughly works out to be 50 odd Australian dollars. Um, and you know, it is a cartridge, it is a physical only release. And so that, that might, you know, depending on your opinions on things, you know, as to whether you might be interested in that, I'll leave that up to you once we uh, show off the game. So enough of, 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 of the unboxing business. That's what I think we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut over to the 64, boot the game up and have a playthrough and see what you all think. And we're back. Here is Mono now fired up. Um, pretty bare bones title screen. So let's just hit fire and get straight into it. So Mono, uh, as I would have indicated, is a vertical scrolling shooter. And the idea really is you just want to survive the end of the six stages. And well, I've already shown the first trick. Unlike a lot of shooters, uh, you could freely wrap around the play field, which is kind of an interesting little mechanic. Um, so now I can just... Oh, I miss those. So you wrap around the edge, horizontally or vertically. Um, I actually really don't like the vertical element to this, because you could sort of get in the wrong position and suddenly find yourself not able to attack. 
And because you're at the top of the screen, you've probably wrapped around to move some distance to, um, you know, to try to get some enemies that have appeared at the top, and so you'll take a hit. Now, that's sort of the first big trick in what Mono does. The second trick is the way your scoring is handled. Now, most shooters, you've got three lives, you get points for, for blasting enemies, pretty straightforward. Different point, you know, different kind of points for different enemies, things like that. With Mono, the score system is far different. Um, you can sort of, you can see it going down the left side of the screen. Basically, you earn points for blasting enemies, and you lose them when you get hit. And in effect, when you run out of points, if your score drops to zero, then it's game over. So right now we're coming to the first of the bosses. Huh? There are six stages all up, and these bosses aren't... Oh, I've just lost lost a power up. Oh, those, those, you have seen those yellow pickups. Oh, now I've been hit twice. You can see, you know, now I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking, I'm losing points because I've been hit. Um, and now I've lost my, all my power up, so back to my default shot, and now I'm taking more hits. So let's just focus a bit. The wraparound really comes in handy when you're fighting the bosses, but they're frustrating because the patterns. Um, Alright, one down. Um, yeah, it reminds me a lot of... Ooh, 53, okay. Gotta just... Alright, that's stage one done. You can sort of see how it works. You know, you see the score go up by taking out enemies, the score goes down as you get hit. And that's an interesting mechanic, um, but it has a big con in that um, it's pretty easy to get to the end, to, to get pretty far in this game on, on a first play. Um, it, on my first couple, of, my first play I got to the final stage, six. On my second play I got to the final boss because it defeated me. And on my third play I beat the game. Um, I, I, this is kind of, I think, the big, the big challenge in longevity for me, I think. Um, it makes a lot of sense as a score attack kind of game, but realistically, you know, you can't, you, because of the way your scoring works, you can't, um, you can't track that properly, and I, I, it would be kind of cool if you could see if you know, your energy and your score were separate things. So your energy was charged by shooting enemies, but you still had a score per se, because at the end of the day, um, you know, this would be a cool kind of game to run within a score contest, but how do you work out how far people go? And that wraparound, that vertical wraparound. I love the horizontal wraparound. I think that's actually a really cool idea, but the vertical one, just because the up, just because you can get cut off so easily. But then there's also um, the inertia factor. The controls are solid. It's uh, joystick and port two, or the um, or the keyboard. You can actually use the W A S D keys to um, to move spacebar to fire. And personally, I'm not a big fan of keyboard games on the 64 for using the keyboard for action games. But here we've got, you know, so it might be better for um, you know, maybe it's something the devs preferred during development. You know, I presume they dev on an emulator, even if the game's only available for real hardware. Now we've got the second stage here, and this one really shows why the horizontal wrap is a cool idea. Yeah, you know, because you've got, you've sort of got to time your your shots to blast through those enemies, but at the same time, you know, then keep ahead of their shots. I really like that. Visually, um, the backgrounds are very nice. I kind of like how every stage offers a unique background, and this this art for level three, I think, probably the weakest. Um, but each stage, of course, alongside that offers, you know, some unique sprites. So there's a lot of variation in what the game offers. Um, it's pretty impressive for what it comes down to in terms of its, uh, its capacity. Yeah, it's a game written on a 16K cartridge, and it's, yeah, they've, they've done a nice job of packing things in. Some nice, good enemy patterns as well, you know. All of that stuff's on. There are... I can't remember which stages. I think it's on the, the next stage. Uh, yeah, but there are... That's sort of one of those things I hate with shooters, like enemies that, that lock onto you right away in terms of just shooting you. Oh, do I get? I think I did get that enemy in time. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I just really wish um, the wraparound didn't happen at the vertical because you just you mess it up and then you get hit. And maybe, maybe it's just the way I like to play shooters. Um, 
but the soundtrack is really good. I'm really impressed with the soundtrack. I like, yeah, there's a unique tune for each stage. Um, really, really well crafted city music there. Alright, yeah, first stage boss coming up. I think this is the only one where they're like, like they start running to limits their multiplexer. As you can see, occasionally a bit of glitching. I don't know. I don't know if you're as likely noticed as I am, or maybe I'm being a little too thing like that. But hey, it's it's no commando, so that's probably not even really worth a, worth a, worth a note. Um, the pads on this boss, I'll admit. Ooh. Okay, three. Oh, I thought I was two. One. All right, stage three is done. And that, right, right now, it's about seven minutes on the on the camera, and that's halfway through the game. And I just, I, I kind of wish the scoring was disconnected from the energy because then that would really make it. Okay, now this has those enemies I really hate. Those. That robot that just fires the, the home, like the, they, they just, they just home. I kind of wish they, they were slower or something. Um, like I just find them frustrating to counter because you're trying to counter so many other things, and you've got these enemies that home on you, and it's just like no, 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 no. Again, I, you know, as I talk about stuff, this is a lot of design stuff that, you know, I feel from my own opinions and. Um, yeah, I kind of feel, yeah, again, the way I like to play a shooter is a, as a relax, it's actually like the kind of game that relax, that I find relaxing, like a, a good frantic shooter, um, like not bullet, not a, not a bullet hell one, but um, I could just relax, and that's sort of why I like patterns that, that you can react to, you don't need to absolutely memorize. Um, well, that being said, IO is a game where you absolutely need to memorize it to be able to get anywhere, and I should be able to enjoy it. I used to just have a bit more time for that when I was younger. Um, to sit down and actually learn those patterns. Because I remember being able to get a good chunk of the way into that game on a life. And because of its design, if you lose a life at after a certain point, it's basically impossible to survive. Which kind of dings that game. But hey. Something that dings this though is I'm blasting a 6510. I don't really want to blast the processor by, behind my favourite 8 bit of it. Well. Anyway. We're on 2.30, so I've got a decent amount of energy points. I don't I feel like it's en I feel like calling it energy just because, you know, you get it, and that's stage one to stage five. But yeah, I love that, you know, there's the unique graphic set for each level, the unique, unique music track for each level. Now, there's a lot of variety packed in the game. Uh, let's keep... I just do feel some of the waves are a bit frustrating. And I don't know... I don't know if... You know, if anyone feels the same from watching it as I do playing it. But I do kind of feel there's a, um... Very much a, like, mid-80s arcade game vibe. And that... Kind of... Might be... Yeah, that might be a blessing or a curse, you know. I mean, I'm enjoying this. Um, it's a good challenge, just a little frustrating in points. But I feel at the end of the day, a game like, like a, a good shooter really, you know, for that, for that sort of long-term playability, um, I guess it's about optimization, you know. In, you know, in that long-term shooter, like, you, you'll want to play and see if you can mask all the waves and get to the end box. You know, maybe one credit clear or whatever. Um, if the game has has credits, or do it in one life or whatever. There are there are there are differing sort of oh, different sort of things you might want to focus on in terms of having uh, repeatability. You know, being a high score and being able to save it. All right, stage five clouds. Okay. And one of the things for me is um, with mono is I feel that it doesn't really lend itself to that well. Um, and I think that's the big complaint I have, because everything else has been put together really well here. There's a very nicely packaged 
you know, you'll see from the unboxing that they've done a nice job in packaging it for the physical release. Um, and whilst, personally, I do really wish there was a download available, because that way I can have it on my ultimate and just swap it out as a, you know, have a quick spin. And that's, that's where this kind of game works really well. Um, and I think the, the need to sit there and, you know, have a card expander actually... My setup is kind of cramped, and I can't really get away off a card expander. Um, a trap can dream, hey? Alright, now we're on to level 6. And level 6, as you kind of see, really changes things up. And I'm not a fan of a sudden change up of that. So basically, in the first five stages, the backgrounds were all pat were just like, the star imagery. You flew over them, there was no no effect on your, on your ship in doing so. Um, with stage 6, though... Now the backgrounds, you've got these little, you can see the little animated arrow, so you actually get knocked about um, based on those pits. And I kind of find this to be, I think it's a ramp up that, I don't think it's a good ramp up challenge wise. I think it, if you're not prepared for it, and yeah, the, the instructions kind of mask it out as a bit of mystery, a bit of surprise. I think it's a, personally, I think it's a not very good design decision. Um, again, that's a personal preference, but at the end of the day, I think it just starts getting in the way of being able to enjoy it, because it's like, oh, you know, you... Again, I, I kind of like shooters for being able to just let the lizard brain go. Um, you know, if you sort of understand that element of psychology, the lizard brain and the... Ooh, no, we're under 200 now, that's no good. Getting close, though. I think we're getting up to the end boss now, so... Yep, final boss. Thankfully, this boss has enemies that it spits out at you, so you can recover points, which is kind of cool, but I I do wish he'd actually offered, um, like, this is where the point where I really wish the bosses had hit flashes, so, you know, you shoot an enemy, uh, it flashes, it would flash for a frame or two, just to sort of indicate it's taking damage, because we're sitting there at, and there we've done it, 181. And that, my friends, is, is his mono, um, I'm about to just, it's about to roll out and show the end screen. Now, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, really just have a bit of a bit of a point here. So, I think the big thing with Mono is it's a game that's, that's kind of divisive. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, community div discussion around it that's kind of gotten like that. And um, I think it's the price and the physical on the release. Now, personally, I'm, I, I think I've vlogged about this in the past where I've talked about I think that developers releasing games for old hardware only for that hardware not releasing, not allowing images available, I think is a short-sighted move. Um, but you do get a nice package for the price. And the more I think about it, um, I, I've had fun with this. I think, I, you know, the challenge is going to be beat it, come back, can you get to the end with a higher score? And whilst it's not the challenge that you expect from a lot of other shooters on the machine, um, it's one that does... It is a good good game. I'm, I like it. I'm frustrated in points by some of its design moves. But I, I am enjoying... I have enjoyed Mono. So I think... If you're willing to stump up for the price, if you're like... If you are someone who does... Who is into collecting the physical side of things, definitely consider giving it a shot. Um... It is, I'll admit, I think the price does, the price is the big barrier here. I mean, if the game had a digital download available, I would say beyond a reasonable doubt, check it out. Um, I can respect, because I can respect the fact that, you know, people don't necessarily want to buy the physical releases here. Um, you know, my, I always, I always like the fact that the 64 scene has had good digital support for people who want to emulate or run on devices like the 1541 Ultimate or so on. Um, you know, I find that with mich with other reference micros that I collect for and, and do videos on, that that's not the case. And it's frustrating to get a, to e easily obtain a version of the game that I can run and capture here. So, but I'm going to leave that up to you. I I had fun with Mono. Um, I, and I'll leave it at that. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. If you've checked it out, uh, if you decide to check it out, I'd love to see where, what you think in comparison. Um, but otherwise than that, thank you all very much for watching, and um, 
I'll see you on the next one.